Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome back to a brand new camp build. Today we're going to be turning this little pylon here into something much, much more interesting. So we're going to fortify this place, get a upper level on it, and generally make it a bit more cool. So well, let's jump into it, shall we? Okay, so just have a look, look, little look at where we are. Top of the world's just across from us here. Just near Morgantown there, Bolt 76. And we're not too far at all from Bolton Green. So, convenient little uh, spot, this one. Just on the edge of the Forest and Savage Divide. We've got a couple of bits and pieces already in place with this uh, particular pylon, which actually does kind of make this build a little bit harder. But it also gives it a bit of extra character, so there is that too. So, for right now, I've got these two foundations in place already this is it took me quite some time to get into place so rather than faffing with that for ages on camera i'll show you basically what i did so we positioned the one foundation where i thought the right place was snapped the second one onto it and then i used these posts these are the tall posts in the stair tab to gauge whether or not i got them lined up properly and whether or not i got the height right so here you can see they are both about the same distance so we've got the line following the line of the pylon correctly and they're just about clipping through the crossbar there at the top, which means they are lined up for where I need the floor to be. And you can also tell from that that they are three stories high, so you know you've got the uh, final position of the floor will be at the right height. But just to double check on this, we're going to do a little bit of confirmation. So we've stuck an extra foundation on there, snap a staircase in, and we should have to go up three floors. And then when we do, that floor should line up with the foundations below, assuming everything's gone according to plan and it should be resting quite nicely on those cross beams. So, let's get a couple more floors, stairs and floors in. So we're on the first floor here. That's floor number two. Get this staircase snapped in when it wants to cooperate. And that'll take us up to floor number three. I should say, by the way, I'm sorry there's no uh, interaction sounds going on. Unfortunately, I had a few issues with the uh, in-game audio on the recording here, so... Putting the environmental sounds back in wasn't too bad, but unfortunately the uh, individual interaction sounds would have been nightmarish, so I thought I'd like to get this video out before Christmas, you know. So we'll have to make do as is. But, as we can see, we are now lined up properly with the two foundations there that we actually want to build off. I have our staircase on. That's looking nice. When we head back up, we'll be able to see that the uh, floor pieces here, which are the level we actually want, are sitting quite nicely on that crossbeam. Just about spot on, in fact. <laughs> Didn't take as long as you might think to get this right, actually, with the uh, way I tested it using the pillars, but uh, it does require a little bit of patience. So, if we've got these in the right place on the horizontal plane as well, it should fit just about to the edge on all sides. Obviously, here we've got a half size gap, which is not quite perfect, unfortunately, but that's just uh, is what it is. It's just the size of the pile on there. Not much we can do about that. So that front edge seems to be fine. Let's test it going across now. Again, we're going to need a half floor on here to get it to fit. And look at that. Perfect. <laughs> nice. So we'll take all that stuff back out and we'll get a staircase in here. So this is a little technique that some of you guys have suggested I try out a few times before. Certainly uh, given some of my gripes with these particular stairs. But we're going to stack them as it will make for a nice little contained staircase running up to the upper level here. So to do that, we've got a couple of the posts, just snap them on the top of the base staircase, the lower one. Go too high here, and then take out the lower level, which leaves those top ones floating, which for the moment we can still do. Then we'll get the staircase we want on, and it should just guide it into place quite nicely. Sometimes you have to be a bit patient with it, it takes a little bit to get it to snap in the right place, but in this particular instance it went just fine. So we'll head up to here, and repeat the procedure one more time. Stick these on the top of those. Yeah, man. There we go. Whip these out. And we should be able to put the staircase in. Doing it the hard way by standing on the staircase here, but needs must be being this high in the air. On the other hand, it went just fine. So, pull these posts off, and we have our stairs up to the appropriate level. So it looks better than trying to um, go around in a circle using the other type of stairs, doing it this way. It just takes up way too much space and just looks messy. So, quite happy with that. Let's get our floor put in. One point that is worth noting here is that um, you will 
quite likely be unable to remove anything once you've put it in place. Something to do with the, the staircase we're using just being temperamental as hell. And um, the glitch that we're using to get them to stack as well, presumably. But uh, it does mean when we actually try to take something out, as we'll see in just a second, I can't actually remove this floor, this one here, will not go. Obviously nothing is relying on that, but that's just the way it is. The only way to change it now would be to move my whole camp and start from scratch. So we'll work with what we've got here. So for the moment, that will do. We'll head back down to ground level and we're going to use the new junk walls. I say new, I use the term loosely to uh, fortify the bottom of this area. Because obviously we don't want just anybody running up to our camp. So we're going to use a few of the good old Fallout 4 techniques and use the rug glitch a little bit here because I want these a little bit closer to the pylon than they're currently able to go. They're much more forgiving than they used to be Fallout 4, which is great, although our selection isn't quite as good. Although I may be uh, misremembering due to mods slightly there, but either way. With a little bit of rug glitching, we'll be able to get this to sit, or at least clip through that concrete base anyway, and sit nice and close to the metal frame of the pylon here. It's good, but not quite where I want it. So, if you're not quite sure how to do the rug glitch, it's basically, well, it's exactly the same as it was in Fallout 4. You place the rug, rug down, doormat, small rug, whatever you like, get the item to sit onto it, and then move the rug so that it bypasses at least some of the collision of the main object. Just uses the collision of the rug. If you want a more detailed look at it, the technique, as I say, is pretty much the same as in Fallout 4. So I'll link it on the card up in the top right corner there, um, the video I did for Fallout 4 on the rug glitch just a, a little how-to on that so hopefully that will show you everything you need to do and you'll be able to take it across to 76 as well if you would like to but one good thing about the changes for this set of walls in 76 is that we can now sit them much closer together than we used to be able to in Fallout 4 this would needed rug glitching and possibly pillar glitching and all manner of other things which sadly the pillar glitch I would have liked to have been able to do here but unfortunately no sinking in for me so we have to make do with a tiny little bit of floating and hide it where we can. For now we're going to make sure we've got the line right and run this across between the two legs. Yeah, on. There we go. Tiny little bit of floating on that. But we'll be able to hide it with the grass, so shouldn't be too much of a problem. And we've got a little gap there that we'll come back to in just a moment and plug it up. For now we're going to jump onto this side here. And this red stag that you sort of see behind the corner of the junk wall there is causing a few issues as is the rug glitch incidentally on this these require you to place the rug a bit further underneath the actual uh wall piece there you will see in just a second when we actually get it to work <laughs> still being temperamental there we go you see that little hop there that was it <laughs> so you might be better off using a larger rug but obviously the bigger rug you use the more conspicuous it's going to be when you have to leave it in place which obviously to get the rug glitch to work properly yeah do so we'll get this sunk in a little bit on this side. I have to assume they've made a little cut there so that it'll sit nice and flush with it as opposed to clipping. And then we're going to have to work on a bit of an odd line here. Try and run this just behind the remains of the rad sack on the floor because unfortunately we can't delete it, we can't blow it up and make it fly away. Can't use the bulldozer feature or anything to get rid of it, it's just stuck there which is very very annoying. So we're going to have to run the line of the wall just behind it. Otherwise it's going to stick out in um, a very annoying way and look ridiculous so keep an eye on that make sure it's I've got the line right so we'll be able to pass it behind the behind the little rad sag there a little tweaking necessary fortunately as always with these things it's trial and error but we will get there it's probably a good moment to point out obviously I'm not going to go through and show you every single wall piece I place the general idea will uh, get you going and you'll be able to follow it around if you want to recreate something similar but um, you will also encounter basically your own unique set of issues because there's just no way you're going to be able to get everything in exactly the right spot that I did. So a little bit of trial and error will be required if you want to have a crack at something similar. And um, of course the video is going to be quite long enough, we don't want to be here all day, so some trimming is required. <laughs> so we'll give you uh, the essentials and then we'll move on a little bit. Uh, once again, we're going to clip this one in on this side, get it just behind that bleeding rad stack. <laughs> and we're just about there. Just need to tweak the angle a little bit so that the walls will actually meet up when we finish it off. Unfortunately, there's going to be a little bit of a gap, but we'll address that. <laughs> just about there now. 
close enough, I think. Not perfect, but it is a junk wall after all, so perfect isn't really the idea here. One very cool little feature. Some of these edges are a lot softer than others. So in this case, we're able to just clip these two sort of supporting posts on the end of the walls together like this. Just sit them one inside the other, which is very, very convenient, very, very cooperative of it. Not all of the wall pieces will do that, but some of them will. So quite handy there. Unfortunately, as you see, we're left with a gap that no wall is going to appropriately fill. So a little solution here is going to be to hop on and use good old reverse junk walls. In keeping with the general scrappy look of the thing, and it should look pretty good when we're done. Obviously, that's not going to clip into place. Fallout 4 days, it would have gone in there and just gone straight through, sat in there as a, looking like a single object, which would have been nice. But was not to be, so we'll flip it around, and there we go. Looks pretty good. So, moving on a little bit, we've done this front edge. This is the western edge of the location. We've got a little gap here between the existing ramp, I suppose, there and the fence we're trying to put in and i'm going to use these tires because they kind of overlap quite nicely they look good when they do overlap rather which some of the other ones don't look as good in this case there's a bit of a curve to the front edge so it kind of conceals the fact that we're making do there we go nice and easy so i said we jump back to this little corner over here that wasn't working and we are now going to do that now, I've flipped this round so the rug is on the other side of the wall here, and it's also say, a little bit in from the end, just so that we can get it to sit in an ideal world between the fence and that little bit of concrete there. But it's actually going to go slightly underneath the floating edge of that wall next to it, but hey, it works, so that's the main thing. Again, we're going to have to reverse it so that we can plug the gap. And if I'd remembered, I would have put something there to hide the tiny little bit of floating, but sadly I didn't. But that would be the general idea. So as good as we're going to get with the mechanics 76 gives us to play with. So, on to the next thing. I want to build a little kind of guard post entranceway to our fortified inner area of the camp. Unfortunately, the gap between these posts is not conveniently the right size to be a set number of foundations wide, so a little bit of improvisation is required. In this case, we'll whip those walls that I put in earlier. And just try and get these lined up. We're going to use that middle piece, that middle bar as our guide. There we go. And you can see we're about half a foundation off there, which is typical. So we'll nudge this over a little bit and get it centralised. There we go. And that should about do. We'll be able to plug up the gaps on the side in a bit. Basically, I use the same technique to plug up those gaps as I had with the other junk walls. Just a bit of rug glitching and get them as snugly to the sides of the building and to the pylon itself as you can. Fortunately, I forgot to record it, so a little bit of trial and error, but it's the same principle as we have used so far. So, you can basically ignore these posts that are put in. They're sitting on the corners, but um, they are the product of a previous idea that didn't work out very well. So, I left them in, but uh, they are not in any way essential to the build, so as we'll see in a moment. So, I want a couple of guard posts on the front here, and this ended up being a bit strange. So that one sat there okay. This one sort of hops forward there. Can you see that? There. And it just goes in perfectly, and I think it's got something to do with a rock in front of it. But this one doesn't want to do the same thing, which was maddening, because um, the way that other one sat was absolutely perfect. So... I think it's down to that rock there, but... Uh, Either way, we come up with a workaround that, well, works. <laughs> so, grab a foundation, snap that on underneath. Now we can position this guard post in exactly where I want it. And to my complete and utter surprise, when I take the foundation off, spoiler, <laughs> it actually worked. It didn't take the guard post with it. Presumably it sat on the inner foundation, or the contact point is. But I did expect the whole thing to disappear at that point, and it didn't. So, pleasantly surprised. And this door on the front will be coming off in a bit. Basically because, uh, to be honest, I wasn't happy with the finished product here either. But uh, I was happier than uh, its previous state. So, I don't know. I think maybe I should have gone smaller and put a few more junk walls in perhaps. But, eh, it works. So, I'll swap it out for corner walls. Make things a little bit more interesting. Also, in case anybody throws a grenade at the entrance, it should roll away a little bit there. Instead of rolling into the camp. So... Because I'm leaving the posts in for some bizarre reason, we'll put a couple more to bring them up to the height of the roof. Actually, as you'll see in a moment, put a couple of walls on the back there. A couple of uh, warehouse walls, but 
again, did it off camera, but made some final changes. So, a couple of supports required for these two guard posts, because they are floating, or at least this one is going to get some supports. Unfortunately, the other one, the supports, either the guard post floats or the supports do. You kind of can't win on that, unfortunately. But uh, we shall have to make do. In this case, it's a bit of trial and error to find what will actually fit underneath, given the ground is not quite level there. That looks solid. As I say, you can't really tell, unless you're looking closely, that the left-hand end of this guard post is floating, but this right-hand end... Because it's over a slope, it's either the tyre floats or the guard post floats, so kind of a no-win situation. Well, what can we do? I'm going to use a technique that I used a couple of times in Fallout 4 here to create a kind of entranceway and a bit of support for the front edge of this roof. I'm just going to stack some tyres up, which is... Yeah, I've not done this properly in a while. I did it briefly, sort of, in one build previously, but it was more about plugging up a gap in a wall than supporting a roof. But it's a good little trick. It works well. <laughs> These tyres, as long as they're not too big, are willing to clip just through the edge of the roof there, which is nice. We'll stack these ones up and hopefully get it a bit more tidy than the first one. My hand doesn't fly around too much. Yeah, man. There we go. Let's see, just about the right height. We'll grab the bottom one. And it's basically doing the same thing as the rug glitch to the ones above. There we go. Nice and easy. A nice tyre entranceway. I did want something sort of below the roof to bring down the opening over the... bring down the height of the opening, rather, over the guard posts. But unfortunately, the recent changes to hanging walls, that is no longer an option, which was slightly frustrating. But... Oh, another related news to that, I should say. The issue with swapping doors and walls that prevent us from putting wallpaper on both sides of the wall is getting fixed. If you guys haven't seen it already, covered it in a video on Thursday. Thursday did say that that was the unintended side effect of the changes they had planned to make, so interlinked systems and all that. But as of Tuesday, that particular issue will be getting resolved and we'll be able to double side our walls again. Which is very, very good to hear. But back to the moment, we are going to plug up the last few gaps because although nobody can get through these gaps, they could probably shoot through them, which we'd generally prefer if that wasn't a problem. So. Going to get some general junk, a few stash boxes, a few items from the appliances tab, and just pile it up in the corners. Which keeps with the junky feel of the walls, which works quite well. In this case, we're going to use some filing cabinets, because they are very, very cooperative, actually. A little bit of an issue there, but the fact they snap together is quite handy. A definite improvement over Fallout 4. They also used to have massive collision boxes behind them in Fallout 4, so I'm glad that's been fixed too. So, this little ice box will fit quite nicely in the gap there. Plug that one up. So, same principle on this side. We're going to do something a little bit different. And again, we'll repeat it on the other two corners as well. But we'll repeat the principle on the other two corners using different bits and pieces. But rather than being here all day, I'll demonstrate on this one again and we shall move along. So, we took this fridge in here. Should block that corner off nicely. Shove that cook it back a little bit. Nice flat back to it. Makes for a good wall item. And we'll drop something on the top. Let's go with a chair. Still leaves a few gaps, but it is uh, more of a, a piled up barricade than an actual wall, so more about the look rather than anything else. Come on, get on there. There we go. Nice little chair on top of the cooker. So, we'll jump upstairs. Last little fly around up here. Most of what I did up here ended up being decoration. I had originally planned to put a sort of structure up here. Unfortunately, we are a little bit too high and couldn't quite get the roof on it. So I ended up not going with that idea and just going with an open plan type feel up here. But we're going to use these new spike barricades which came into the Atomic Shop this week. They're very, very cool. Very happy to have these. I like them a lot. Still not sure why they use concrete instead of rubber, though. There's no concrete anywhere near them, and there's quite clearly rubber on them. But uh, it is what it is. Unfortunately, because the sides of the pylon taper, we do encounter a few issues here. And you see, I can't even get this particular barricade to sit anywhere near the edge of the platform. For some reason, once it's placed and I move it sideways, that one was willing to work. No idea why, but it is what it is. So... Um, Get this one put in the middle and basically put them in temporarily because some adjustment will be required. Unfortunately, as I say, that tapering of the pylon is also going to cause problems later on with putting some other bits and pieces in. So we'll have to kind of work around it. Just going to create a nice kind of junky railing around the edge. 
kind of functional one as well, as you'll see in just a moment. Well, that's the general idea. Some of these put, uh, little railings will snap on, some of them won't. In the case of the one that wouldn't there, it's just because it's too tall. In the case of this side here, unfortunately in front of us, it's um, because we're on the end of one piece. The Specifically the one of the half pieces on the end of it rather than the side. So those railings won't go across two pieces, unfortunately. These ones, however, as they're a little further back, will snap in. So mix and match, go with that junky vibe. Nice and scrappy. So struggling for something I could get in here that wasn't huge, blocky, and looking ridiculous, but the sort of thin profile of the vending machines worked quite well. It also meant I could have some vending machines in the camp, which is always a bonus. The height's a little bit awkward here. You can see it's sort of clipping in at the top just about there. But it's uh, the best option I came up with, and it works quite well. So we'll repeat it on this corner as well. Actually did it on a few of the corners. Well, three of them. Nudge that back a little bit. Unfortunately, these are now getting in the way, so we'll pull these back out. Come on. Oh, yes, I tried to shove it over first, and you sort of see there that they'll actually clip through each other on the sides, those spike barricades, which is quite cool. But still won't go far enough over. So, out you come. Yeah, there we are. It's still not going quite as far back as I wanted to. <laughs> Stubborn, though. Come on. Figure it out. There we go. <laughs> So nudge that back a little bit further. You have to go around the side to get it to go back as far as possible. But, once again, that's still a little bit further away than I'd like it to be. That's about as good as we're going to get, I think. Get it up against the other side as well. There we go. Tucked in as far as it's going to go. And now I can't get this uh, spike barricade back in. <laughs> so we'll pull this one out. And take that little... Uh, railing off because it's kind of useless now the barricades there shove that over there line it up along the front edge kind of hard to see what you're doing without falling to your death there so caution is required actually to be fair i think you can survive the fall from this height but i wouldn't want to fall much further <laughs> there we go just a little bit of persuasion required there we go and that'll do nicely. So, repeating the same thing on this side. You see, I've got barriers in here. And we'll basically do the same thing behind us as well. Facing uh, east here. Can't quite fit that vending machine in again. So we're going to nudge these over a little bit further. Get them as tightly in and packed as we can. And then this machine can go as far back as it can. And just as tightly over as it can as well. So that we can fit one more vending machine just here and then we've got the full set again it's finicky but that's junk walls for you <laughs> there we go we've got a little bit of space there on the corner where we can drop a generator as well in a bit so that is the gist of walling this place off and after that it's just decoration so let's uh, move on and check out the finished product and there we go <laughs> So, some decoration later, we have our fully fortified and decorated pylon build. So, really, really happy to have the junk walls in. It makes the place look much more secure, much more complete and permanent. So, pretty happy with the results here. Take a swing around. See, I put a few little bits and pieces on the outside here, just to sort of junk it up a little bit more. Should have done that corner on the left, but can we do? Haven't quite noticed that the... Uh, what is that? It's a um, filing cabinet clipping through there. But unfortunately, I didn't notice until I did the tour, but what can we do? Little radar cage, because why not? Need to mix up the outside a little bit. A few textures on that wall with the uh, struts on the reverse trunk wall sticking out there. And around the corner, put a little punji board over the front of that ramp there, just so it stops any wasteland denizens from just running in and straight up to my camp. Don't really want that. A few bits of junk there, just to texture up the walls a little bit. We'll swing around to the front. You can see here, as I said, I've basically rug glitched these um, junk walls in, just to close up the gap between the pylon and the edge of the guardhouse there. And the same thing on the right. Took a little bit of patience, but we got it in there. Take a little look around the inside. I think on hindsight, if I was to do this again, I'd make it a single sort of 
secure entrance rather than putting guard posts here. Maybe have a guard post outside of the structure. Might have looked a little bit better. But it's not too bad for now. Wallpaper, a little decoration there. Head on inside. So mostly farms on the lower level. A little bit of junk and storage. Tuck the power armor station in here because it's a pain putting it upstairs. I haven't really got enough room. Plus getting up and down those stairs and power armor is not the ideal scenario. There we go, a little bit of razor grain. With this particular tower here, I needed something on this side to support the platform above, because it's on that back left corner, it's not actually all that supported because of the stuff that's already in place. So, formerly the easy thing to do would be build down and just suspend the walls from the roof, but in this case that unfortunately wasn't an option. So I basically ran the foundations out from the foundations here, and then deleted the spares so that I had it positioned directly underneath one of the floors above and then just stacked the walls all the way up to the top. A couple of doorways in there so I can use the construction lights to throw a bit of illumination down on the lower level. Swing up. Got the new Blood Eagle totem there, which, given that you're not going to see it in a Blood Eagle camp, at least I don't think so anyway, doesn't bother me too much. It doesn't make this place feel too raidery. It's just kind of cool and makes for a dramatic entrance. <laughs> But we are up to the upper level. I've got the vendor switched off so I don't get any uh, visitors while I'm doing this little tour. Unfortunately, up here the frame rate is not quite what I would like it to be. I think the combination of being open plan and having a lot to render in the foreground and therefore, because it's open plan, the background as well kind of struggles a little bit. But it does look pretty cool. A few display cases, plenty of room to move around. I do like how this little... Uh, crafting area has turned out in the middle here just stacked all the benches back to back it's a nice little tiny unit there and well defined little crafting area it looks cool well, I think so anyway so I thought I'd use this vault tech canopy here just to get a little bit of extra shelter for the bed it's a little too clean really but I wanted to enclose this area so we've got a couple of junk walls just on top of some concrete tires there because they're not quite tall enough on their own another vending machine tucked in the corner and a few other bits of decoration knocking around as well. Unfortunately, closing off the sides of those um, canopies is not quite ideal, but what can we do? Make it look scrappy, I think is the honest answer. <laughs> a few tyres as uh, light stands. And I do really like that new uh, minecar cooking station. It's very, very cool. So, you can see I've tucked a couple of rugs here, which are a bit awkward, so that we can just cross the gap. But it does kind of work as well. Now we make our way down the stairs. So we'll take a little look around the outside and wrap this one up. So thank you very much for watching folks, do hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, please do hit those buttons for me, it's very much appreciated. Social media links, merch store and channel memberships are all available via the description if you're interested in supporting the channel in that way. Support is humongously appreciated. And do join us for one of the live streams as well, having a lot of fun playing Fallout and a little bit of Horizon Zero Dawn now, which is cool. Very much enjoying the story and uh, exploring the world on that too, so I do hope you'll join us for some of that. For now. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.